Hi, welcome to episode 9 of My Yarny Corner. My name is Alex and I live in Yorkshire in the UK and this is a podcast all about knitting and crochet. So welcome everybody, I hope that you're all okay. It's been a couple of weeks since my last podcast and if you are a returning viewer you'll know that I've created a space now finally that's mine to podcast in. I spent some time last week just sort of making this area for me and I've really enjoyed doing it and it's nice to have all my things in one place because I tend to scatter it around the house as any of my family members will tell you I've got yarn everywhere so I've kind of contained myself to this area now I've got a chest of drawers with a, which is sort of crammed full with yarn at the moment and all my little bears behind me so I'm really enjoying it and yeah it's a little bit echoey I think at the moment because it's still quite bare here but I'll try and sort that out by the next podcast. So yeah, today's the 6th of, God, it's the 6th of May already, isn't it? Wow, this year's going really quickly. Today's the 6th of May. We've got some nice sunshine today. It's been raining for about two weeks. Real like torrential rain, horrible. But today it's absolutely gorgeous outside. So I've been sat in the garden this morning. Had a little trip to Hobbycraft as well earlier on. So yeah, I'll stop waffling and get on with the podcast. I have a finished object, I have some works in progress and I have giveaway to announce as well. So we shall start with finished objects. Um, I've said before that I wanted to make a bear for every month of the year and this this time it's my only finished object is my bear. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to make a bear for every month of the year so we're up to May now. I did ask people um, on the last podcast for some ideas for bears and a lot of people said Morris Dancer Bear which I absolutely love that idea and I did try really hard to do that but as I started I'd made the initial bear and I was sort of you know doing the little details and things she kind of took on a personality of her own so she's not a Morris Dancer Bear I'll show you but she's a very very posh lady who lunches bear and she's all ready for a day out at the races she's got a little handbag as well little flower on the head and I absolutely love this bear nothing like the idea that I had in my head at all but sometimes that happens so yeah it's just crochet and when you're doing amigurumi you just use a single crochet stitch so it's quite easy and you just go around and round and round to get the shape that you want I do make a ton of bears if you follow me on Instagram or you've seen any previous podcast you'll know that I make a ton of bears I just really like making them really sweet so she's sitting up there with the rest of them Oops. and hopefully by the end of the year I'll have bear, bears galore <laughs> so yeah that is it for finished objects uh, so we shall move on to works in progress I'll start with hopefully I've brought it up I'll have to cut the video because I've left it downstairs. You see, I say that I've got all my stuff in this area and I haven't because the project that I want to show you is downstairs. So I won't be in a minute. Sorry about that. I had to shoot downstairs for this project. I was adamant I'd brought everything up earlier, but no. So this is the Pure Joy Shawl by Hokey Locatelli. It's living in my little doggy bag that I got from Etsy. I actually got this for Christmas last year. I've shared it before on the podcast. So I really love it. So anyway... Take it out of the bag. Right, where are we up to? So yeah, this is the Pure Choi Shawl by Hoki Locatelli. And I'm trying to let it slip off the needles. Is that the right way? Yeah, stitch markers on that side. It's looking absolutely gorgeous. I can't remember where I was. I should have left the progress keeper in place. From last week but it's really grown there's a lot of stitches on the needles now so it's starting to take a long time and I haven't actually worked on this since I think Wednesday or Thursday last week because I started a new sweater which I'll talk about in a minute but I really need to be working on this one I've said before this is going to be a birthday present for the children's grandma so her birthday is actually on the 27th of May so this needs to be in the post by the 25th couple of days to block it to wash it block it and dry it so it needs to be ready by the 23rd and I've still got quite a lot of this colour to do and then 
you changed, I'll put a picture on the screen, then you changed to this one. So I really need to pull my finger out with this and stop messing about. Because it's short rows. <clears throat> That's what gives you the shape. It's take These sections do take quite a long time. And like I say, there's quite a lot of stitches on the needle. So I really need to get on with this. I haven't got long to do it. I'm going to have to be strict with myself. But yeah, so the yarn, this... The lighter yarn is Mr and Mrs Rabbit yarns. That is beautiful. And I think this was the March Sock Club. That one is just one that I dyed up. But I really love these colours together. I think the needle size is a four. Let me just double check that. Yep. Four millimetre needle. And this is on my Chow Goo needles. But it's a really lovely pattern. There is a lot of short rows in it, but I've been using a stitch marker, so I'm not having to think too much about it, which is just there. But I'm really, really enjoying it. She says, and she hasn't worked on it for a week. I am really enjoying it. So yeah, that is the Pure Joy by Hokey Loki Telly. It's already quite big. I think there's still quite a few stitches to go on there, but it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful shawl. It's just a four, uh, blah, 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 blah. it's just four ply yarn. But yeah, really enjoying making it. It's absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait till that's finished. And I do think the children's grandma is really, really going to love this. It's just beautiful. I love the colours. I can't wait to get onto this section of it, to be honest. I think I'm kind of bored of the pinky colour now. But yeah, I need to pull my finger out. I need to get on with this. You see, what happened was, oops, because both balls are attached, I can't wrap it up properly to get it back in its bag and I'll keep I need to put some needle stoppers on the end because I keep thinking that these stitches are going to come off the needles when they're in the bag and I keep checking it all the time just trying I'll sort it out in a minute right so that's that I was telling you last time about um I cast on the flax light by tin can knits and totally messed it up <clears throat> so I got in a bit of a mood with it, it went into the naughty corner and I cast on the flax, which is the heavier weight version of the flax light. So I cast that on and then I had problems with the yarn that I'd bought. I'd bought the leader of the pack from Hod uh, Hobbycraft and it was an alpaca yarn and it had felt really, really soft in the shop. But when it was actually on, it went over my head. It just, I, did, I couldn't bear it, I couldn't bear it at all. So last Last time I podcasted, I was really disappointed with myself and really like, oh, I can't make a sweater anymore. That's that. I'm going to give up. I'm never going to make a sweater again. I really threw my dummy out of the pram and I got in such a mood. But I sorted myself out and I cast on a new sweater. So I cast on the Whitmore by Amy Loudon. Now, I was a little bit nervous of this. I've seen a lot of it on Instagram and it is beautiful. Karen from Stitches and Jacks has made it and she made it in a gorgeous blue colour and I thought I'm just going to give it a go and if it don't work out I don't have to share it on the podcast nobody has to know what I've messed up yet again so I just went really slowly with it oh I'll show you it's living in just I have this really big bag of sweaters she says sweaters I've only made one it just seems it's a sweater has always been my nemesis in knitting it always has been something that I've always struggled with so I'm determined to master it and I do like knitting sweaters so I cast on the Whitmore I'm so impressed with myself I am so impressed with myself look I did all this this is why the shawl has had not just no work done to it I cast this on last Thursday and I just couldn't put it down I just fell in love doing this bit and I was actually, we have just had the bank holiday weekend in the UK and I was really, really poorly. So I wasn't doing very much. I just sat on the sofa and I just knit this and I had such a good time. The pattern does call for a four millimetre needle, but I did go up to a 4.5. I'm going to admit that I haven't swatched as well. I've changed needle size and I haven't swatched so bad. But I know that I'm a really tight knitter. So I don't think it a four on a four millimeter. I think it might have been a little bit tight for me. But yeah, the yarn is the Women's Institute in the colourway mustard, which is that one. 
this was the colour that I bought in the alpaca yarn to do the flax. I just I love this colour. I think it looks really, really nice with jeans. And this section here, it was just so easy to follow. If if anybody ever said to me I could make this sweater, I'd have been like, no, there's no way I can do all that. But I've just split for the sleeves. I'm just going round and round in the body. You can see that it's all curling so with the needles that it's on. But yeah, I really love it and I'm really, really impressed with myself. So if you've been looking at the Whitmore sweater and not sure, do give it a go. Because I think whatever colour you do it in as well, it looks absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, I got totally addicted to it. I just could not put it down. It's all I wanted to work on. It's all I wanted to make. And then it came to, I think it was Monday. <laughs> and I thought, I've not even started my bear yet. I just wanted to work on this. But I think now I've got past all the, the lace section now, so I'm just into the boring stockinette stitch going round and round and round. So I think it'll slow down now because this bit's going to take ages, this stockinette bit. But yeah, it's a lovely, lovely pattern. One that I'm definitely going to make again. I'd like it in um, like a really pale green. I think that'd be nice. And maybe a blue as well. A blue would definitely be nice. But yeah, definitely a pattern I'd make again and definitely recommend it. This bit here, she's, she really does hold your hand all the way through this pattern. If you've been watching before, you'll know that knitting, it's not new to me, but it's not something I've ever really experimented with like I have with crochet. You know, I can knit a scarf and I can knit a blanket and that's fine. But for me, anything like this is a really big thing. So if I can do this, anybody can do this. But yeah, really, really enjoyed making that. So yeah, that is the Whitmore sweater. And I do have one more work in progress, actually. Let's pop that back in my bag. <clears throat> So I've really, really lost my sock mojo. I've not made socks for, for a couple of months now. I really have lost the sock mojo. And I think it's because I do get second sock syndrome. When I first started making socks, it didn't really bother me. And I thought, you know, it's fine, it's fine. But as time's gone on with making socks, I really do get that second sock syndrome. And I do miss making them. So I thought, what? Well, how am I going to get around this? So, oops. Ellie from Craft House Magic has a tutorial for adding an afterthought heel to a sock tube. So I thought I'll do that. I'll just make one really long sock tube and then split it into two and just add heels and toes and cuffs or whatever I need. But I, I don't think I can physically cut into yarn without freaking out. And I know for the afterthought heel, you need to cut into it. And I've never actually picked up stitches. If I make a mistake in knitting, I don't. I don't know how to pick up the stitch. I know it's something I really should learn by now. So I've, I've sort of, I've knitted this far. This is, this yarn is just some that I dyed up. But yeah, I've knitted this far and the plan was just to make a sock tube. But I don't think I can do it. I don't think I've got the skills to be able to do an afterthought heel. So I've kind of gone back to the drawing board with that. I was looking around on Ravelry. And I came across um, a pattern for simplistic two at a time socks. And I looked at the designer, it's actually Pearl Passion, who is one of my favourite people. She's lovely. She helped me a lot when I first started podcasting and she's a lovely, lovely person. Um, do go check out her channel. And she started designing, well she hasn't started, she's been designing a long time. And, but she had this pattern for two at a time socks. And the pattern was really, really cheap. I'll put it in the description box below. So I'm going to pull this out. Because I haven't got very far. I've only done this. And I'm going to give two at a time socks a go. I don't know how well I'm going to get on with it. By the time it comes to the next podcast, I'll either have a finished pair of socks or it won't have worked. I've had a quick look at the pattern. I haven't, obviously, I haven't started yet because I need to pull this out. Um, and I think I'll be okay. I think I can do it. I think these, she starts them from the toe up and I'm used to working cuff down, but it'll be fine. I'm really excited to try it. I don't know 
it, it just, it seems so long since I've made socks, to be honest. I think when was the last pair of socks I made? Maybe February time. I, I got in a bit of a mood, so some of my socks ended up in a normal wash and they came out felted. And it was some of my favourite sheep on yarn, yarn, and I was really upset about it. And that was the last, I think I was making socks at the time and I haven't made any since. But yeah, I'm going to see how I get on with two at a time socks. I really want to give it a go and I do miss making them because they're such a fun project, especially when you're out and about in the car as well. They're re really easy to take with you. Watch this space, we'll see what happens. But I've got to be good next week because I have to get on with that shawl. I've got to have it ready. What are we on now? It's the 6th of May today, so I've got what, just over two weeks. It's taken me three weeks to get that far. Right, I'm going to have to be really strict with myself next week. I can't mess about. I've got to get that shawl done. But I do want to start this pattern. Yeah, so I'll link the pattern in the description box below as well. And we'll just see how I get on with it. I've got both balls of yarn. These are two 50 gram balls ready. And I thought I'd do, do the main sock in this colour and then do a hot pink heel and hot pink toes. It's just... But yeah, I'm a bit nervous, a bit nervous to try two at a time socks. I've tried the Whitmore and I was okay with that. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So yeah, that's the plan for this week. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is... I know Sharon from SCNR, TN, SCR, TNR... I can't say that, SC, I'll put it on the, on the screen. She does a six day rotation, which is a really good idea. My problem with knitting is when I first start a project, it's all I want to work on and nothing else. Then it kind of goes to the back of the pile and then the back of the pile some more. And I need to be a little bit stricter. What I think I'm gonna do is work mainly on the shawl, but maybe just give myself half an hour a day on another project, will that work? I don't know. Watch this space. Anyway, <clears throat> what else have we got? So that's all my works in progress. Um, so I would like to add a new section into the podcast called Podshare. I watch so many podcasts and I always do like hearing about new ones to watch. As I said before, I don't watch a great deal of normal TV. Apart from The Good Witch, I love The Good Witch. My partner will tell you I watch that every night before I go to sleep. It's my favourite thing to watch. And Superstar, I love that as well. Um, but yeah, so I do watch a lot of podcasts. So I always like hearing about new ones that are out and about. So I thought it'd be something nice for me to share with you as well. So there's um, a couple of new to me ones that I've found this past week. Um, the first one is Mouse's Makes. Now she's a new podcaster very very talented knitter she's and she's a I think is she episode four or five now but yeah very funny as well she was telling a story about Brussels sprouts not the not the episode that she's just done but the one before I was in absolute stitches um so yeah she's Amanda Jane from Mouse's Mouse's Makes so if you get a chance go and have a look at her podcast it's very good she's very very funny Another one is the Woolen Homestead, and that's Tiffany. She is in, I think she's in Michigan. She's, that's a very, very relaxing podcast. She's very calming, and she's, on the last episode, she was making, I think it was an advent, is it an advent calendar or an advent garland, and there were just mittens. Um, was it, I think it might have been a calendar, you know, that you had, sweets too I think that's what it was but yeah she's making all these mittens they're absolutely gorgeous so that's a very good podcast and I've been just recently catching up on our all her old ones as well so yeah that's the Woolen Homestead that's a really good one and the third one that I want to mention is Ari About Designs that is Caroline and Andrew they are a mother and son team and they are so funny together <laughs> they have been stitches um Caroline's actually making, um, it's a huge, huge blanket and it's sheep. I don't quite know what the terminology is. It's 
different on each different colours on each side. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's definitely some kind of wizardry. And I think she was counting them all this time, all the sheep's heads that she's got up to. So it's taken her a while. I think she's struggling a little bit with the, the, the size of it. But she's up to 25. I was like, oh my God, how are you doing this blanket? And it's all black and white as well. It's absolutely stunning. But on one side, it's mainly black and white. On the other side, is mainly white and black. It's gorgeous. So yeah, that's a very good podcast to um, go check out. So go and check out that one as well, if you would like to. So that's it for pod share. I also wanted to talk about when I was doing the Whitmore sweater, I don't actually have a printer, so I can't print any patterns out. And I know, sorry about that, the um, camera cut out again. So yeah, I don't have a printer, but I do have a row counter app and it's really, really good. Um, you can add all your projects from Ravelry and it's got like, um, so you, you link your project directly onto it from Ravelry and it's got your row counter. It's also got a secondary row counter as well. And if you pay for the year, um, and I think it was five ninety nine for the year. It's even got different tools for designing patterns. It's got highlights so you can highlight the row that you're on. It's a really, really good, if you don't have a row count, if, it, if you could hear that, that's my partner downstairs on the PlayStation. I'm really sorry. Anyway, moving on. If you're like me, I, I do have a little row counter that you, that you turn but I only ever use that for socks or mittens or something, so it's always in use. So this row counter app, you can have as many sort of projects on there as you want, and it all links up to Ravelry. You can post pictures on it. It's really, really good. And I'd only ever had the free version up until last weekend when I was doing the Whitmore sweater, and I needed a highlighter to see what high, what row I was on, so I ended up paying for the, um, for the full year, which $5.99 for the year I thought was really, really good. Yeah, I'll try and link it in the description box below. I'm not sure how that works because it's an app. But yeah, if you're like me and you still do need a row counter, it's really, it's such a good app. It's such a good design. But yeah, I'll definitely link that below. Anyway, wittering on and on and on and on. Shall we get on with the giveaway? So I did say last time if I reached 200, 200 subscribers, I would do another giveaway. And when I checked before I podcasted this morning, I had 245. So, oh my God, thank you all so, so much for just continuing to support me and support the podcast and just hitting the like and hitting the subscribe. Do you know, it's just, you've all been so lovely and you leave such, such lovely comments. And I do try and respond to every single comment because I think if you take the time to comment, you know, I want to take the time to reply so thank you all so much and the lovely Suzanne from Green Lambkin Yarns had got in touch with me and she'd offered a prize for the giveaway so that arrived oh my word she sent one for the giveaway and she sent one for me as well the, give <clears throat> the giveaway one is all wrapped up I haven't opened it mine's identical so I'll show you mine so It's absolutely beautiful. Excuse the rustle in a moment. So this is from Green Lambkin Yarns. Look at that. She sent me a little tea as well. Isn't it gorgeous? So this is what you will get in the giveaway. I turned the stitch marker the wrong way. Hang on a moment. There we go. Have it so the stitch marker is the right way. Um, the yarn is Fairy Forest. It's on a sparkle sock and it's 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina, 100 grams, 400 meters, and it's super wash. It's absolutely beautiful. It was so, so kind of her to send this for the podcast. I think, look at that. Can you see? Can you see the sparkle in that? You probably, I think the camera's only just picking it up. It's absolutely beautiful. So that is going to be in the giveaway. I'm also um, going to donate a pattern. Pearl Passion, who I've talked about before, is design, does design knitting patterns. And um, she's following a lady who has a, a GoFundMe page. She's waiting for, see if I can get this right, a bilateral heart and lung transplant. 
think that's what it is. Um, so all of her proceeds from the first month of her patterns are going to this GoFundMe page. So I thought it'd be really, really good um, if I could purchase a pattern. I want one for myself and I want one for the giveaway as well. The pattern is not actually out till Friday. It's a sugar cane hat pattern. And I think it's based off Minecraft. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous hat. She showed it on a podcast uh, last week. It's a lovely, lovely pattern. So I will make sure that I've got that. And that will be another prize. We'll have two prizes for the giveaway this time. Oops. Sorry about the rustling when I wrap that back up. Um, so yeah, we'll have two pa two prizes for the giveaway this time. And what I will do with the pattern is I will buy it and gift it. Um, yeah, I'll do it that way. So I think you can buy and gift some, send it as a gift on Ravelry. So yeah, we'll do two prizes. Prize will be the beautiful, beautiful yarn from Green Lambkin. Green Lambkin also has a podcast as well. Um, so go and check out her podcast. It's absolutely brilliant. She was the one. She was making the... Um, oh, I've forgotten the name of it again. I did this last time I tried to talk about it. What was it called? The cowl that I was making right at the start when I first started podcasting. It's by Yarnia Designs. What is it called? I can't remember, but I'll put it on the screen. She was, I was watching her Vlogmas and she was making that. And that's where I got the pattern for that from. But yeah, she's an absolutely lovely, lovely person. And she's absolutely, a yarn is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So I feel very lucky to have some green lambkin yarns. And I'm sure that you'll like it as well. It's beautiful. So to enter the giveaway, um, leave me a comment and just say, pick me and I will... Like I did last time, I'll write all the names in order on a list and we'll take it from there. Yes. <laughs> so that's the giveaway done. I'm definitely trying to follow the podcast notes because nine times out of time, ten, I'll do a podcast. I'll write all the notes down of what I want to say and then I don't look at the book at all. I'll do the podcast and I think, oh, I meant to say that and I meant to say that. So if you see me looking down, I'm trying to stick to what I'm, what I'm actually talking about. So I think that is it for the knitting content. I have rabbled on a lot during this episode. I'm really, really sorry. But yeah, that's it for the knitting content. Um, I had my first proper session of physio yesterday. Oh my God. If you remember last time I've told you, um, I was waiting for physio. I have a what I thought was a torn rotator cuff in my shoulder. And it's been quite painful for quite a while now. So I had my first face-to-face -face session yesterday and I did a lot of exercises and things and it turns out it's not a tear, which is fantastic news. So no surgery, thank goodness. Um, it's an unhealed sprain. So because I, I think it happened a couple of years ago and it wasn't that bad to start with. And then I went to physio and they made it worse. I refused to go back and I've kind of just been managing the pain but over the past six months, it's got a lot worse. Anyway, he was saying yesterday, it's because it's an unhealed sprain, the muscle has just got weaker and weaker and weaker. And at this point, it's just not strong enough to support that shoulder, which is where all the pain is coming from. So he thinks it'll be really, you know, not really easy at all. I've got to do the physio. I've got to be strict with myself and actually do the exercises that he sent me. But it will get better. So I'm really, really pleased about that. Oh, that's something I forgot to mention. That reminds me with talking about um, the Etsy shop. This had just literally come through the post just as I started podcasting. My partner had ordered me some yarn. Where's this one here? Can you see that? Oh, where's my camera? There we go. It is Dye and Knit by Kate. And he ordered me this at the weekend. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Can you see that? Isn't it gorgeous? This one is blueberry yoghurt and this one is oriental sentiment. I really, really love that. It's gorgeous. So this one that has got alpaca in it, it's 60% superwash merino, 20% superfine alpaca and 20% nylon. And this one is 
75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I'm really excited about those. They're gorgeous. They smell really nice as well. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm going to make with those actually. Maybe a boxy. I really want to make the boxy sweater. I don't know. The fact that it's in fingering weight kind of puts me off. But I'd really like one. We'll see. We'll see. So, yes, in other news, um, I have opened an Etsy shop. I'd put some patterns on Ravelry. I put March Bear on Ravelry, hadn't I? And a couple more different patterns. And I've been dyeing a lot of yarn lately. My son had bought me a yarn dyeing kit for Mother's Day. And I'd, I'd sort of had a play with it. And I just, I don't know, I found a new love. I absolutely adore doing it. So I've, since Mother's Day, I've been sort of messing about and dyeing yarn and things like that. And I've really, really loved it. And my partner said to me a couple of weeks ago, you can't possibly use all this yarn. You know, why don't you open an Etsy shop and just put on, you know, what you're not going to use and sell it. And I was really nervous. I just thought, oh God, no one's going to want to buy my yarn. You, you look at the the yarn dyers out there and they're all absolutely gorgeous but mine will just be you know my little little things so I, i've done it I've, I've, I've put my big girl pants on <laughs> tried to find some confidence from somewhere and i've I've opened an extra shop and i've put the, put a couple of patterns in there and i'd made some yarn um over the past few days so th this is my latest one that i've made this one I've called Dragon Fruit just because of the colours. Oops, I can hold it up properly. So I'm just looking outside, it looks like it's going to absolutely pour it down on my washings on the line. Just keeping an eye on that weather. It was gorgeous this morning, it was so sunny. So yeah, this one is Dragon Fruit. I'm going to make some more yarn over the next few weeks and when I get enough I'm just going to do um, a shop update on Etsy. So if you would like to have a look you can do but yeah I really I really enjoy doing it I find it just I don't know it's kind of like it's one of those things you know when you, you start doing it and think yeah this is me this is my thing and I just I just really enjoy doing it and it's taken a lot of confidence to open that Etsy shop because I didn't want to do it I'm, I'm not the most I'm not the most confident of people at all I'm the person at a party that's always stood in the background, you know, everybody else is talking and chatting and I'm always stood on the outskirts. I'm just that kind of shy person, but if you don't try these things, you'll never know. So, yeah. By the time I do the next podcast, I'll hopefully have some more yarn and I can let you know where I'll put it in the Etsy shop. But yeah, this one is Dragon Fruit. It's four-ply yarn and it is 400 metres for 100 grams. So that is that. Watch this space for that. <laughs> and I think that is everything that I've got to talk about. I kind of feel like I've bumbled a lot through this episode. I'm really, really sorry. The camera cut out and the postman knocked at the door and it's just... But hopefully it was all okay and I didn't bumble too much. Um, so yeah, don't forget to leave a comment for the giveaway. And if you don't want to enter the giveaway and you just want to leave a comment, please do, because I do enjoy reading them all and I do read every single comment. And it means a lot when people do comment. And if you can hear that noise, that's dog snoring. I'm really sorry. Can you hear that? <laughs> she's, she's a little pug. <laughs> Bless her. She's a little pug and... She's, a, she's not a full breed pug, she's a cross between a chihuahua and a, pro, a pug. So she doesn't have the awful like breathing problems that some of them have. But she does snore really loud. She's not allowed in the bedroom on a night because she snores so bad. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you can hear that, bless her. Anyway, I need to stop laughing. I'm practically crying with laughter here. I'll try and edit that bit out. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so don't forget to leave a comment for the giveaway um, and then we'll pick a winner on the next podcast. And yeah, so keep safe, everybody. Enjoy the next two weeks and I shall see you later. Bye-bye.